well, we pretty much have all the specs for the 5090, 5080, and now 5070, but as good as these GPUs look, well, a lot of people are actually getting really mad about the RTX 5070 as the specs are a little bit surprising. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by FlexiSpot in the E6 standing desk and OC6 chair. The FlexiSpot E6 standing desk is a high quality and durable standing desk that can go all the way from 24.4 to 50 inches, which is great for people of all sizes and allows you to get the health benefits of standing while working, which can be crucial these days if you work from home. Not only that, but the desk is virtually silent while it raises and you can set and save profiles with the easy to use controller that comes with the desk so you can quickly change to your favorite heights. Plus, the desk fits great into all types of office environments with its high quality tabletop available in many different styles and sizes that's nice to use and sturdy enough to be accurate when using a mouse or writing. Plus, if you're in the market for a new chair, you may want to give the FlexiSpot OC6 a look as not only does it feel great to sit in, but it's packed with features such as adjustable height, adjustable lumbar support, adjustable 4D armrests, breathable mesh, tilt function, tilt tension, and ergonomic rolling. And with support for up to 500 pounds, it was even able to survive my cheeks for extended periods of time. So if you want to stay in good health while working without being hunched over like Gollum all day, and you're looking for a great standing desk that's sturdy enough to lift a person or a new chair built for big fellas such as yours truly, heck, sometimes I even need a double cheek couches with one cushion for each cheek. Anyway, if that's what you're after, be sure to click the links in the description below. All right, so the RTX 5070. This is a GPU a lot of people, myself included, have been very hyped about because it should be one of the more affordable higher-end RTX 50 series GPUs, bringing a ton of performance improvements at a what should be reasonable price for people not looking to spend over $1,000 on an RTX 50 series GPU to play their games at 1440p high refresh rate or even 4K high refresh rate as it's actually looking really, really fast. And in fact, recently we got some more information about this GPU. Now, this was actually posted by Harukaze over on Twitter who has leaked a number of things, but one of the things he did include is that the RTX 5070 is gonna be produced on a slightly lower end die and once again, will have just 12 gigabytes of this time GDDR7 on a 192 bit bus and the well-known Nvidia leaker Cop87 Kimi also came in and mentioned that it would have a power draw of it appears to be 250 watts. Now according to all the other information that we've gotten so far the RTX 5070 in terms of the full specs should only be actually a small improvement when it comes to the core counts or SMs on the GPU itself. However most of the performance increase seems to be coming from architectural gains as well as increased clock speeds allowing it to be much much faster and of course you are getting the new GDD R7 memory, which is going to be much faster as well, but it is still again going to be sporting just 12 gigabytes of it, meaning you will be getting a bandwidth of 672 gigabytes per second, which is a modest improvement over the RTX 4070. And at 250 watts, that's also appearing to be pushing up the power by around 50 watts as well. So, what do you get for that? Well, it looks like this GPU should be at least on paper up to 36% faster, and it will likely have a release date sometime in quarter one of 2020. And it is possible you might see it as early as January, which is actually a little bit sooner than I was expecting, and that would be definitely really good to see. But why are people so mad about the RTX 5070? I mean, if it's 35% faster and it's only drawing 250 watts, what's not to like about this? Well, there's a couple of things, but the main thing people definitely seem to be up in arms about is the VRAM. At just 12 gigabytes of VRAM, once again, in 2025, many people are very concerned that this will be cutting it too close for games games and at a very high price that they're likely going to be charging for this GPU, it seems like not enough video memory for the amount of money that you're spending. But is this something that we should be worried about? Well, in order to figure that out, I went ahead and gathered up all of the specs as well as the pricing for all the 70 class GPUs from Nvidia for over a decade. And let's go ahead and take a look to see whether or not the RTX 5070 really will be terrible value or if it's actually going to be good. And starting off with the GTX 670, this was released back in 2012, had two gigabytes of G5 memory and did have around a 29% increase in performance from the previous model and had an MSRP of 399, which if we do actually adjust that for inflation comes to $540. Now, of course, two gigabytes of VRAM today, not so good, but back in the day, that was actually okay. But moving on next to the G5 
GTX 770. This came actually in 2013, still only had two gigabytes of VRAM and was only a 13% increase in performance according to Tech Power Up. Had an MSRP once again of 399 and adjusted for inflation that comes to $537 today, which is actually still less than what we're seeing for stuff like the RTX 4070 launching, at least back when it did. But moving on next to the GTX 970, this one launched in 2014, actually doubled, you can say doubled because I know there was the whole 3.5 gigabyte fiasco with this, but let's just say doubled the VRAM to four gigabytes of G5, had a 43% increase in performance, and the MSRP actually dropped to 329, which adjusted for inflation is just $436 today. And I think looking at that, it's easy to see why people are getting so frustrated by GPU pricing and VRAM today. I mean, if you were getting double the VRAM in one generation and a price drop, that seems like a really good deal in comparison to the ever inflation prices and the stagnating VRAM that we have today. But let's go ahead and see if this trend continues. Moving on to the GTX 1070. Well, this was released in 2016, had eight gigabytes of G5 memory, so doubled again. And this time there was no fiasco with it. Had a 47% increase in performance, came in at $379, which was a small increase, but not too bad, which today comes to around $495 adjusted for inflation. And now you're really starting to see why people are getting frustrated. But moving on to the RTX series, Series. The 2070 here launched actually in 2018, still had eight gigabytes of VRAM, though it moved to G6, had a 34% increase in performance, had an MSRP of 499, a pretty massive jump. And today that would be $623. Easy to see why people did not like the 2070. But next we have the 3070 was released in 2020. Once again, had eight gigabytes of VRAM. And this one was definitely very controversial as it was the third generation in a row of just eight gigabytes of VRAM. And it was a problem when it released. And it's definitely a problem today. Although to be fair, it did have a 53% increase in performance and the MSRP stayed the same at 499, which adjusted for inflation is $605 today but now we move on to the 4070 released in 2023 and finally it moved up to 12 gigabytes of g6x memory and it had a 22 percent increase in performance but the msrp increased again to 599 which adjusted for inflation is 618 dollars today and then finally we have the 5070 which is allegedly coming out quarter one of 2025 12 gigabytes of vram again but this time gddr7 25 to 35 percent more gaming performance based on the leaks and then it will have an MSRP likely a 599 once again, which does put it as one of the most expensive 70 class cards that we've seen ever. And so it's easy to see when you take a look at the history of cards, why people like cards like the 970 and 1070 so much, but have been very frustrated with the recent 70 class cards. And with this once again, probably coming in at a ridiculous $599 price point, And once again, only having 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I think people just want better value out of their cards. Now, I don't necessarily think that 12 gigabytes of VRAM alone is a huge issue right now as the consoles do actually only have access to around 12 gigabytes of VRAM so if you want to be matching console settings well basically any game that comes out you should be able to at least match console settings and get way higher frame rates however with future games it definitely will be cutting it as many games might actually have higher resolution textures on pc than what are available on console and if you're spending more on your gpu than an entire console i'm sure you do expect a better experience out of pc than you're going to get on console not just out of the frame rate but the quality of the games as well and that's something that might not be possible if you're locked to 12 gigabytes of VRAM as it depends on how good the port is and how they use system RAM versus the VRAM on your card. And let's be honest, not all developers do the best job of optimizing their titles for PC, so you actually probably want more VRAM on PC than you have on consoles. That's why I think a lot of people are asking for 16 gigabytes on the RTX 5070. And in fact, if we go ahead and we take a look at the average for all these generations put together, we can see that on average, it takes them about 1.6 years to release a new GPU. It typically increases by around 1.75 gigabytes per generation. And the MSRP is roughly on average $463, which adjusted for inflation would be $557. But if we remove the last three generations, which I think most people would agree are actually a little bit too expensive, well, the actual average MSRP would likely be closer to 
$500. So what should the RTX 5070 really look like in an ideal world where they're actually following the cadence that we'd like to see? Well, it would still be coming out in 2025. However, instead of having 12 gigabytes of VRM, it would have 14. Now that is technically possible as you could have a 224 bit bus GPU, but it can get a little bit complicated. So I understand why they wanted to stick with 12 gigabytes. However, it would also have to have a 35% increase as on average, it looks like GPUs do get a 34% increase every single year. And then the MSRP should not be $599, but it should be $499, a whole hundred dollars lower. And I think if you were able to get a 5070 at $499 with 14 gigabytes of VRAM, that would be a very enticing card. But for $100 or more and two gigabytes less VRAM, it starts to become questionable for a lot of people whether or not they want to upgrade to this card. But you could also NVIDIA come out with 12 gigabytes of VRAM still, I think that would be fine. However, the price would have to decrease to 449 to get gamers really excited about this card. I think if you came out and you said the 5070 is 449, people would be jumping to buy this card as that would be a really great value option and they would be okay with every once in a while having to drop textures from super ultra high to just high. I think a lot of people would be okay with that at that price point. So what's the takeaway here? Well, I think the takeaway should be it's not necessarily Necessarily NVIDIA, if there's anyone watching from NVIDIA right now, that people are really mad that it still only has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Sure, they want more VRAM. I'd love to see it with 16 gigabytes. I think that would be ideal. But what they're mad about is the value. They feel like the cards are too expensive to still only be giving 12 gigabytes of VRAM. If it was cheaper, I think they'd be totally okay with that. But I have a sinking feeling you're going to be charging $599 once again. And frankly, that's just too high for this class of GPU. Now, if you wanna make a slightly more beefed up version with 16 gigabytes of VRAM and charge 599 for that, I don't think anyone's gonna have a problem. But 599 for just 12 gigabytes, again, it's not necessarily the RAM, it's just the price for what you're getting. But that's just what I think. Do you think that the RTX 5070 is totally fine to be 599 for 12 gigabytes? Or do you think it should be 16 gigabytes, 14 gigabytes? What do you think it should look like? What do you think the price should be? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.